affirm that the testimony given before this council of the city of Circo shall be the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, so thank you everyone for having us today. Um, my name is Tony Perez. I am, uh, I'm an owner of Lemon Development and uh, our parent company, Danbury Senior Living. Today we're here to talk about um, a property on South Slope Pike. Um, like Mr. Crawford said, it is uh, currently zoned AR Apartments um, and we're looking for a rezoning of special use. Before I get into the actual project, I want to talk a little bit about who we are, um, Lemon Development, and who Danbury Senior Living is, so you guys get a little bit better feel of who we are. So, <clears throat> Lemon Development was founded uh, by Bill Lemon 43 years ago in North Canton, Ohio. Bill Lemon, at age 82, is uh, still the acting president, um, still does a lot with us day-to-day -day in operations, and uh, he actually started his career in Columbus. He always wanted to, uh, to, to have a senior place here in Circleville. Um, about a few months ago, Bill and I actually drove down here and looked at a bunch of different sites, and we found this site on South Hill Park. So, so over the last uh, 43 years, he's been, been in the development business. Uh, he's built um, just about everything. Residential allotments, multi-family, industrial, uh, mixed use. But uh, really, our last, uh, our last 20 some years has uh, been focused on senior living. So, Danbury Senior Living. Uh, we just added this, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, we're just named the top workplaces in Northeast Ohio. I know we're not in Northeast Ohio, but uh, for 2020, so we thought that was a pretty cool thing to add, um, which was uh, says something about how we treat our employees. But uh, so Danbury Senior Living is, is our sister company. Um, uh, we at Lemon Development develop everything and, and set up all the deals for Danbury Senior Living. Uh, the first Danbury was built 23 years ago in North Canton, Ohio. Um, from, from requests to build um, from seniors living in his market rate apartments. Uh, basically, the, a, a lot of the, the seniors that were living in his just his, uh, just his regular apartment buildings were complaining about loud noise, people staying up late. So um, Bill decided to, uh, to do something about it and, uh, and started looking at senior living. So at the time, senior living was a little bit uncharted territory for Bill. Uh, since we own and manage everything, 
uh, our employees have definitely uh, rose. So we have over 1,500 employees and we continue to, continue to grow every year. Um, our employees are our most important people, especially in, in this time um, with this crisis. So uh, we, we value our people. Um, the other thing that's important is we, we hire local. Um, we, we want people in the community to come work for us because our hope is that they're going to bring their loved ones into the Danbury um, and, and be a future resident. Okay, so to get into the actual site and, uh, and hopefully uh, the Danbury of Circleville. So um, if, if you can see up here, I've got a couple renderings, but uh, our Danbury product and our Danbury, our Danbury buildings, since we've done this a, a couple times, we've really tried to enhance our, our residential feel from the exteriors of our buildings. We're not, a, we don't want it to feel institutional. We want it to feel like a residence when these people come home. We want them to feel like home and they want, we want them to feel like this is, uh, this is a, a residential feel. So a lot of our exteriors have masonry and siding. Um, landscaping is something that uh, we really take pride in and, and uh, we continue to do on this project. So the overall site plan, as you guys can see, So the main building, the main building here uh, will be uh, licensed through the Ohio Department of Health as a residential care facility. Um, we're, gonna, we're, we're looking at for this building to have 60 plus uh, assisted living and right around 21 to 23 memory care units. So um, it's going to be a 24 hour a day employee-based uh, building, and it'll be sprinkled uh, full-time. At the back of the building, we're looking at having 12 villa units for more of the independent uh, residents. And then on the floor plans, <clears throat> floor plans, uh, we, we definitely offer a large range of units. Uh, mix of one and two bedrooms and studios. So we range from right around 300 square feet, 350, all the way up to uh, one of our larger units is 1,400 square feet. So it, it's important, it drives our marketing people kind of crazy, but we like to offer a lot of units. We like to offer a lot of variety uh, for price point and you know, for, for our residents to come in and choose what they want. Um, second floor plan. Apartment amenities, just a, a variety of plans. Um, a lot of our utilities are included. Um, we also we also uh, offer nurse call systems and security cameras. Um, and, and like I said, by doing this for so long, I think we've really come down to uh, we're really really working well with our operational side and, 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 and enhancing these buildings every building we go. You can look at some of the amenities that we do and some of the programming. 24-hour, uh, like I said, nurse call, 24-hour response system, uh, weekly housekeeping and laundry systems, uh, lounges and sunrooms, scheduled programs and trips, beauty, barber salon, gym, game rooms, pubs, uh, library, movie, theater, and arts. Um, our main goal is to get our residents out of their rooms and get them into uh, the community spaces so they're, so they're um, living together and, and uh, and socializing. Uh, just like we threw one in here on the landscaping, just so you guys can see how how uh, much we, we do spend and, 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 and pay a lot of attention to a lot of the landscaping in our communities. So I, I did mention the villas in the back. Um, the villas in the back, like I said, we're offering 12, uh, we're going to do 12 villas. We have at the back of the building, two bedrooms, two bath, two car garage. Uh, the villas will be defined as an independent living, so but we'll still monitor the, the nurse call and some of the smoke alarms just for safety. We'll be, we'll be around 1,300 square feet with a two-car garage. Uh, so that's that's about our presentation and who who we are and what we do. I do want to mention uh, to the council here that we did have a meeting last week with uh, the 
condo, the condominium residents off of Camber Drive. I knew there'd be uh, some concern, and I thought it was important to get in front of them and to talk about what their concerns were and who we are, so they got to know us a little bit better. Um, I think overall it went well. Um, we did talk about Camber Drive. We talked about the current zoning and what it is and what could go there. And what we're doing, I think, is, is obviously a, a, a better solution um, to what the current zoning is. You know, definitely traffic was a, a, a concern, but uh, you have to realize that our residents, you know, the, the average age of our residents are between 80 and 82 years old. So most of our residents don't drive. So we're going to get we're going to get traffic down camber from um, obviously our employees and from loved ones going to visit visit the, our residents. Um, and if we go back to the site plan, we didn't rely directly on camber. Okay, is the main in and out. We're also proposing a right in right out on Southville Pike to alleviate some of that traffic going in. Even though Camber Drive is, is a public street. Which we understand that, but we felt like you know by doing this, this is gonna gonna help help the traffic flow off camera. Um, one of the other issues was water pressure. You know, I, I think we've done uh, with uh, with with the city. We've already got into some of the water pressure, and we've done some uh, some flow tests over there. We're gonna probably handle our building with a separate pump system, um, so you know won't affect the uh, the condo people. Um, so we feel pretty confident in that, and, uh, and that's about it. I I asked for I don't know how you guys want to do it. Ask some questions from council first, and then call. You we'll wait and see if uh, a few things. As the mayor of the city of Circleville, I said I'm planning to zone. Uh, council, you need to know that this came to you with a recommendation for passage, and it was unanimous from from planning and zoning. Uh, now I'm talking a little bit about development. Uh, Ryan's going to talk to you in a minute. One of the things that uh, we do, I do, I work very closely with Ryan and some other folks in developing the city of Circleville and making it ready for, for a future investment and whatnot. We think that this project will even encourage more progress into our area, more folks coming into our area and living. So we as the city administration uh, and as planning and zoning support this project. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Stricker, if you can give the clerk your full name and your affiliation, please. Ryan Stricker, Pickway Progress Partnership. Um, You shall may affirm that the testimony given before this council of the city of Circleville shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, just a couple of quick comments, if you would. This is a type of development that P3 isn't typically really involved with. We, we specialize more primarily in, in industrial development. Um, but when we um, have interactions with a, a quality developer, and, and I've been doing this almost 10 years, we've come across all kinds. I really appreciate the approach that Tony and his team have taken. As being very open, um, almost even sticking their chin out a little bit, if you will, um, in some regards, as far as soliciting input from the public. Now, when they when they approach us and talk about wanting to invest 18, nearly 20 million dollars in Circleville and create 80 jobs, good jobs in the community, and provide a service and an amenity that obviously there's a demand for. If you look at our, our demographics everywhere, not just in Circleville, um, and then to be looking at a piece of property that is really designed to accommodate this type of project. It's, it's nice when we're, we're supporting a project where we're not trying to shove a square peg in a round hole. And uh, I think the existing zone use comes really close to accommodating this. The special use the district certainly does. Um, but then the aforementioned um, development plans, long-term plans that the city uses to guide and inform decisions, the Edsel plan and the other that Terry referred to, they support this type of development on this property. So it's a nice development with a, with a nice developer on a spot that can accommodate it um, very well. I, I do want to um, really uh, commend uh, the public, the residents. Um, we've been involved in other rezoning hearings um, where it was not nearly as cordial, it was not nearly um, as well thought out, and well prepared and professional in the approach of the way they're expressing their concerns. 
I think that speaks very highly for Circleville as a community and, and should make you guys feel good about coming here with the way to, you know, these are good questions. I haven't heard an irrational thought, I haven't heard a name called. Um, you know, I have seen that in other examples, in other instances. So I feel really good about our community. I feel really good about the developer. Um, I think there's a way to sort through all the challenges we've talked about. There is still layers of process left. we got to have some faith in the work that uh, uh, Mr. Spring and the BZA group will be doing, along with the, their professional expertise that the, the mayor's office and Terry Fraser will bring to the table as far as reviewing storm water and accessibility and safety and all of that. But I think we're on a good track. And from what it's worth from P3's uh, perspective, we would strongly encourage you uh, moving this forward to the next step onto, onto committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Planning and Zoning, Mr. Mayor and area neighbors for hearing the Heather Green condo comments, concerns regarding the proposed land development of the senior living facility on Stelfield Pike next to Heather Green Condo Associations. My name is Brent Bowers, residing in 6 Clare Court, Circleville. My condo is directly beside the proposed development of the senior living facility. I am here along with many other residents from Heather Green Condos and other homeowners in the area on camera. I was appointed by, to be the spokesperson for Heavenly. Last week, July the 16th on Thursday, many of our concerns were addressed by the developer, Lima Development. Most were satisfactory and acceptable. However, after this meeting on the 16th, we would ask and request the following be put on record. Lower the speed limit from 45 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour on Stoutsville Pike from Boulder Pontius Road to the Lancaster Pike, which is US Route 22. We would like to have, we'd like to uh, have an uh, independent traffic study on Stoutsville Pike to determine whether to move the main exit slash entrance to the facility um, on Stoutsville Pike versus Camber Drive. It is a thought that if the retention pond be relocated to the rear of the, the area or to the left or to the right um, from the proposed location to the rear of the property, I said that, closer to the tree line on the southeast corner, traffic safety for the residents of Heather Green would not be of a concern. If the entrance and exit were placed solely off Stoutsville Pike versus Camber, a safety flashing signal indicating hit and drive, um, whatever, be installed. Um, okay. Indicating hit and drive, be installed both east and west of this entrance exit. The proposed main entrance exit on Camber Drive flows through a residential neighborhood, Heather Green Condos. I believe the width of Camber Drive meets the criteria of a residential city street. However, we don't believe Camber Drive would accommodate the proposed main entrance and exit into the proposed development due to street parking on both sides of the road. Next point, necessary boundary foliage trees, shrubs, and or other appropriate fancy babies installed between the two properties. Storm water runoff would be routed to the retention pond, and I don't know if it's retention or detention pond, versus flowing onto Heather Green property, and that was addressed. I just want to make this part of the record. Water pressure to Heather Green condos could be greatly impacted if the proposed development does not plan for their own, and I use the word pump station, and I think that was addressed by Tony. Um, currently, Heather Green does experience water pressure slash volume issues, which the city is aware of. At this time, I would entertain questions, comments from you, and also, if I miss anything, I would entertain comments from the public. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. How many people are you representing by the state? Uh, there are 50 residents in, in Heather Green, so I'm representing 50 residents. Okay. Plus one or two people on Camber, who is not part of Heather Green, but they are on Camber, that old farmhouse. Okay. 
So 52 plus people. Okay, thank you.